Um, right, well, I, I'm uh, what's known as an itinerant scrivener, and um, bearing in mind that most people in the uh, even as late as the 15th century probably couldn't read or write, they would have come to see me at a fair or a market, and uh, they would have bought me their reading or their letter they'd received, and um, I, in exchange for a few shillings or maybe barter, would have been able to write for them or read. Of course, they always had to. Uh, except that what I wrote was what they'd asked me to, to write. Um, I've got most of the bits and pieces that went towards the written word. Um, some of the things on my stand are uh, actually a, a separate ma another man's trade, such as ink maker, quill maker, parchment maker, but I've gathered them together here so that I can give the public um, a little bit of a, a view of what was uh, being used in the trade. Now, we could start very easily with parchment. We're in an age of transition at the moment where parchment, which is just an animal skin, this particular piece is goat skin, we've been using this for hundreds of years. And at this period, in the late 15th century, we were just beginning to go on to paper, which, as we all wear linen, in some form or other in our clothing. When that clothing is worn out it can be easily recycled into rag paper simply by um, reprocessing the, uh, the, the, the torn linen which is of course from a plant uh, with water into a, a mush and then it's uh, pressed into trays and that can be made into the paper which as you can see is it's not particularly high grade paper but it's a, it's a start and we're also in the transition of printing is coming into, into fashion. And we have a little piece of very early printing here, which as you can see is not much distinguishable from the written word. And that was in fact the idea. The early printers tried to copy the, the written word as much as possible. And each of these little letters had to be hand carved from a, a wooden type block. Um, in, in the early days anyway, and then it progressed on to metal. But this became so much cheaper than the uh, handwritten word. If you think that a book, a, a good quality book with illuminations may have taken up to a year to produce by hand. It could be, of course, once the type presses were set up, could be done in a few days. Um, I, use, I use quills, which is simply a feather. It's uh, for choice a goose feather, or if you can get them, swan. Uh, they're the flight feathers from the bird, and um, you notice that it sits nicely into the curves into the right hand. And of course, everybody in this period was was right-handed. Even if you were left-handed, you didn't um, easily uh, confess to that. Um, so it sits nicely there. It has to be hardened, which you can either do by age hardening or by simply dipping the, the end of the shaft into a little uh, pot of hot sand and then taking it out again before it blisters. And then the, the nib is cut with a, a little knife called, strangely enough, a pen knife. Um, that's all there is to that. Yeah. Um, my inks, it's not locked. many ways of making ink. One of the most common in the, in the period that we're representing were the One's made from oak apples, found on oak trees round about September time. A result of a, a little insect laying an egg underneath the oak leaves and the tree naturally grows these around the egg. Then when the, uh, the grub that grows inside departs, this is an empty husk. And we can break those up into uh, some hot water and then add iron sulphate, which is rusty iron and uh, perhaps a little bit of gum arabic um, some other people choose sort of bits and pieces that they prefer to put into the recipe but hopefully the tannic acid in the oak apple will react with the iron sulfate and you will end up with a black liquid which you can reduce in the same way as you would with cooking um, to produce an ink of your choice mm -hmm.